I resent Matt Walsh because I think he's a fascist. I don't think about you at all. I wouldn't really call this an apology. And make no mistake, Dylan Mulvaney is our enemy. He is an open, visible, active, and passionate advocate for the abuse of children, the war on fundamental truth, and the destruction of human society as we know it. No, Dylan Mulvaney does not advocate for child abuse, and gender-affirming care isn't child abuse anyway. Okay. As it's been found that not providing trans health care to youth is actually closer to a form of child abuse. Trans kids who are rejected from Utterly, family, totally baseless. There are no credible long-term studies that bear that out. And 39% physical abuse. So we can clearly prove that trans people are not committing child abuse. But for the other two claims, I don't know what to do about that. They're so over the top and dramatic. War on truth, the downfall of society. How can you prove or disprove that? This is where I think Matt Walsh's resentment has a little bit more to do with envy. I mean, I resent Matt Walsh because I think he's a fascist. You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. But I do also envy him. I envy his status, his platform, the fact that people might take him more seriously than they'll take me. Thank you. But what, if anything, does Matt Walsh envy about queer people? Does he envy Dylan because she grew to such popularity so fast? Is he envious of the fact that she got invited to things like fashion shows, different events, that she's met the president? Now, we've already dealt extensively with the claim that gender transition decreases suicide rates. That part of what he said is totally nonsense. To the charge that I am envious uh, because Dylan Mulvaney gets to go to fashion shows, I don't know what to say except that attending a fashion show would be my actual hell. As for meeting the president, yes, I admit that I would be very eager for a chance to sit across from the president with the cameras rolling, but for very different reasons. No, I'm not envious of Dylan Mulvaney. I mean, in order to elicit envy, he would need to have something that I want or embody some sort of trait that I find admirable. Instead, he has none of the things I want out of life and embodies everything that I want to be the opposite of. President Trump recently issued a warning from his Mar-a-Lago home, quote, our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat, frankly, in 200 years. There are three reasons the central banks are dumping the US dollar, inflation, deficit spending, and our insurmountable national debt. The fact is there is one asset that has withstood famine, wars, political and economic upheaval, dating all the way back to biblical times, and that is gold. I've bought gold from Birch Gold in preparation for uncertain economic times, and you can trust them too. You can now own gold in a tax-sheltered retirement account with the help of Birch Gold. That's right, Birch Gold will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. The best part is you don't pay a penny out of pocket. When currencies fail, gold is a safe haven. How much more time does the dollar have? You can protect your savings with gold. Birch Gold has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They have thousands of happy customers. I'm one of them. If you want to be one of them, you can text Walsh to 989898 to get your free info kit on gold. Again, text Walsh to 989898 today. I had an unfortunate experience today when I logged onto Facebook and I saw this post by Matt Walsh. I'll be honest with you, I thought it was satire. <laughs> I thought Matt Walsh was either making a joke or that he had been hacked. But upon further investigation, this was serious. So let's read it together. All a man wants is to come home from a long day at work to a grateful wife and children who are glad to see him and dinner cooking on the stove. This is literally all it takes to make a man happy. We are simple. Give us this and you will have given us nearly everything we need. The only truth in this entire post is where he says we are simple. You're right. You guys are simple-minded little If your husband is unhappy, consider whether you have ever given him this one thing he wants. There's a good chance the answer is no. I was being abused in my marriage and not to like toot my own horn, I was a pretty good wife. Like I was the wife who stayed fairly fit after two C-sections. I kept the house clean. I did the laundry. I made the dinner. The kids were happy and well behaved. On top of all that, I did all the fun little things in the bedroom he wanted me to do. I would send him dirty pictures at work and try to keep the spice alive. I would buy new lingerie, everything that you can think of. Because I was taught, like this Matt Walsh post, that if it failed, if the marriage failed, if we weren't happy, if he wasn't happy, it was on me. And he still abused me. He still cheated. Well, I'm sorry you had that experience in your marriage. I am. Never should have happened. But you're making the mistake that many people make these days of assuming that a general principle is wrong because of your own personal experience. So it's like if I said that you should lock your doors at night and use an alarm system to prevent break-ins. 
And you responded that my advice is bad because you did that and still had a break. <laughs> Does that mean that you shouldn't lock your doors and use an alarm system? If a certain strategy isn't totally foolproof, does that automatically make it bad? Freeze! Hey, Suck hey, up! Hey, hey, trouble. Hey, you got trouble, now you piece no. of change! Hey. Yeah. What I'm recommending is that women should be grateful and loving towards their husbands. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Now, it's true that you could be grateful and loving to your husband and still end up in a terrible marriage because he's a terrible person. That can happen. Terrible people exist in the world, and there are people who end up married to terrible people. It does happen. You keep him yeah. away from me! Oh, you can't get it done. But does that mean that wives shouldn't be grateful and loving? I mean, are you recommending ingratitude and resentment? Is that a better strategy? Is that more likely to produce positive marital results? You can be faithful to your spouse and still find that he is unfaithful, but does that mean that we should tell people to be unfaithful from the start on the assumption that the others will be too? Of course not. But maybe your point is that we shouldn't put it all on the wife. We should tell the men to be grateful and loving too. Well, here's the good news. I never suggest otherwise. In fact, I frequently encourage men to love their wives and be faithful and good to them. I say that all the time. I just didn't happen to make that point in that particular statement that you read. There are many points that I didn't make because I was only making the point that I did make. I can't say everything every time I say anything. And that limitation does not give you the right to invent a whole series of opinions and statements I never expressed.